Today we're going to compare Adobe's generative fill function to Alpaca AI and see which one produces the best results. Now Alpaca AI is a plugin that goes into Photoshop. I'll pop a link in the description to that and to a tutorial showing you how to get started. So to get started here, I've got this one image. We're going to do a whole bunch of images and just see what kind of results we can get. I'm going to get my polygon lasso tool here and just cut around this guy that we're trying to get rid of. I'm gonna try and get nice and close to the horse to try and maintain him a bit. A little bit rough around here. And if I wanna do this in Adobe Photoshop, it's quite simple. I go down to generative fill, leave the prompt blank and generate. We've got three results. We've got the first one, the second, and the third. I think the second looks best, so we'll stick with that one for Adobe generative fill. But what happens if I take that same selection, turn this off, and go to Alpaca. I'm gonna show you very quickly how to do this in Alpaca and then we'll get down to the comparisons. Under tools, there is a fill function. And you notice there's a whole bunch of other functions here that doesn't come with generative fill. So it's not just about fill, but we are gonna explore some of these options later. By clicking fill here, keeping the prompt blank, I can generate. Once again, I have some options I can scroll through. This one I think looks the best. So I import that as its own layer. So let's put these side by side to compare them. As you can see on the left, we have generative fill. On the right, we have alpaca. The one on the left, I can see already, if you look at the one on the right with alpaca, it looks a little bit darker where the generation actually was. So if you actually look over in this general area here, you'll notice that the grass and the dirt is a little bit darker. The horse itself looks pretty good, but I do have to give this one to generative fill it does seem to match the image a bit more, even though the horses themselves actually look pretty good. And I actually prefer the horse's head on this one, but for more realism, I've got to give it to generative fill on this image. Now, a few more I have tried as well. I took this image of the water and I actually just decided to add a yacht to it. Quite simple, generative fill out of the yacht. And I don't like the look of the yacht itself, but it does blend better as on the right alpaca, the yacht looks nicer but we still got that weird issue where the ocean doesn't really meet very well and the blue's a little bit darker. Then we have this image of a samurai staring at the clouds. I thought I would add a temple in there. So on the left, we have generative fill. Temple looks very good. Uh, on the right, alpaca, that temple looks not too bad. Again, we've got that weird darkness where the fill was actually done, but uh, a much better looking image on the left than to the right. And then we also have this image of a girl I want to add some sunglasses to. Generative fill on the left, alpaca on the right. The I do believe the reflection on the sunglasses is actually more sort of in line with the image considering the lights coming from the left and the shadow on the right. Our generative fill does seem to do a better job of reading the image and adding in what it needs in order to go there. However, both images uh, I would say are passable, but definitely the one on the left is the better. Now I take this image of a city and a skyline. I want to replace the sky with a night sky. It would look a bit funny anyway, but here we go. Generative fill on the left. You can see I added a big moon in there. I want a night sky with a big full moon. And it looks okay, but on the right, Alpac has done a more interesting job. However, it has messed up the building on the left. Alpaca seems to be better at producing more interesting imagery whilst the generative fill seems to be better at keeping consistency. So take that for what you will, because I think if you were to sort of combine the two in a way, you could probably get a really good result by getting a more interesting image from Alpaca and blending with generative fill. Now I took this image of an astronaut. I wanted to test, this is AI art, and I wanted to test the art style and see how well each one could follow. And generative fill did a pretty bland job of following the art style, whereas Alpaca this time did a better job. However, both images are not really that great. Now this image I thought was pretty funny because I wanted to add a beard and hair and I selected the hair and the beard separately with the face. However, Alpaca AI tends to create one solid square over the area. And you can actually make transparent areas and choose to have it fill only the transparent area using Alpaca, but I had a bit of trouble getting that to work this time around. So as far as generative fill goes, I've got to give it to Photoshop. What they do with generative fill is better than Alpaca in most instances, but Alpaca can produce more interesting imagery. But you just have to see these two images to see such a big difference in where I can actually add in hair. 
What about generating images? We can do this in Adobe Generative Fill as well as Alpaca. All I need to do is have a blank document, hit Control A to select all. And when I click on Generative Fill, I can enter a prompt. So I'll say something like, I have a photo of a busy city street in New York, golden hour. And I'm gonna use the same prompt for both. But first I'll generate. I have some options. I'm gonna stick with this one for Adobe. It looks a little bit funny, but let's try Alpaca to see what it comes up with. By going to Alpaca, we can click on Imagine and choose our model. Alpaca 3 is the, uh, Alpaca 3 is the most up-to-date model. I hit Control A again to select the entire canvas. I paste in my prompt. Photo of a busy city street in New York, golden hour. Now, because we only get three images with, generation, with generative fill, I'm gonna to go to three images here as well and click Generate. And we have some images here. Once again, we scroll through, find the best one. I do like number one the best, so I'll add that one in as a layer. And again, we can compare these side by side. So looking at these two side by side again, you can see now they've both got the same problems. The cars are kind of wishy-washy and the details kind of gone and the everything looks kind of shiny and artificial. I do believe Alpaca's layout and color scheme is nicer to look at though, whereas the one on the left looks like uh, a pretty lame Adobe stock photo. Now I've generated a few more as well. I've got a 3D render of a red dragon in the sky. Now Generative Fill produces this very bland red dragon, whereas Alpaca produces something much more interesting, much more detailed, and just a pretty cool image overall. Now, an anime style drawing of a samurai. Both, I think, are decent and good for their own style. I personally prefer the alpaca again. The artistry just seems to be a little bit more detailed and better. But the one on the left is not too bad either. However, I picked the best. With all these examples, I picked the best option I had for each. And there were better options in alpaca for all three. And this was the best option with generative fill. And the other two were pretty ordinary. A woman's face, smiling. Generative fill has done a better job at making a photorealistic face. I believe that the alpaca fill tool uh, has blatantly lost this one. Uh, while it's the eyes are a bit funny, uh, there's just a little bit, a few many things going wrong. Whereas with uh, generative fill, you've got some slight issues with the eyes, a weird issue with the teeth. But I will say this, if you were to highlight the eyes individually, and uh, will highlight the eyes and then highlight the teeth and redo them, you probably find you could replace them pretty successfully. A website design for a car sales yard. So I left, is a Adobe Generative Fill, and that looks pretty ordinary. Whereas on the right, at least you get some ideas from it. Both are pretty ordinary. Considering that web designs are mostly text, I thought it'd be cool to try something different, which I did again by doing a black and white minimal logo of a dog head in a circle. Both turned out okay. However, I think the one on the right with Alpaca looks more like an actual emblem or logo. The one on the left is a little bit blander, uh, not as interesting, but both passable. Beautiful waterfall in nature. Now, both of these images look spectacularly realistic for compared to the other things we've done. However, again, I've got to give Alpaca the props for on the right, it looks a lot more interesting. The layout is more compelling. Everything is uh, just much more picturesque, whereas the one on the left just kind of looks like someone took a snap on, on their camera. However, both have their merits. So uh, I would say a tie on this one, although I personally prefer the Alpaca um, one on the right for this. An oil painting of a dog. So the oil painting on the left, but now once again, you got a more realistic oil painting on the right from Alpaca, but a more cartoony and more colorful one on the left for Adobe General Fill. I would say it's a clash of styles and I call that one a tie. A photograph of a grizzled old man close up. So both of these look kind of, they both got their strengths and weaknesses. They both look almost photorealistic but a few things are missing i would say that some of the details on the man's eyes on the left are a bit funny if you fix those up you would probably be able to get that image and pass it off at, at a glance but on the right the image is way more interesting but i think there's a few more issues the skin it kind of looks a little watery uh overall uh i'm going to give that one to generative fill by a very very thin margin but my final thoughts on that is essentially generative fill is better for generative fill in most cases because it blends more easily. Alpaca seems to be better for producing original imagery, but if you use Alpaca's fill tool, quite often you can create more interesting things to pop into your image. 
I should recommend having both. If you think you can get some value out of Alpaca, use Alpaca, Alpaca's fill tool to get more interesting imagery and then maybe select the edges with generative fill to blend it more realistically or uh, to make it more seamless. Just remember these are just pretty point blank. The one the sort of like tests, you can spend a bit more time on this stuff to perfect it. But overall, I think Alpaca is a great tool and I think the two together will work very well for anyone looking to add AI to their photo or image editing workflow. Don't forget with Alpaca, you do have more tools also. We've checked out Imagine and Phil, but we have all these other tools here. I mean, you've got an AI upscaler, which is gonna be pretty handy as well, as well as a uh, sketch to image. So being able to add sketches uh, and sort of turn them into images is pretty handy. Also, more control over the generation. So if you go to Imagine, you've got the ability to go to advanced settings, set the prompt strength. You can use a reference image if you decide you want to go that way. There's a few options you can do to take a little bit more control if you really need that when generating images or filling images in general. All right, thanks for watching the video, guys. I hope you found it useful. If you did, please consider giving it a like and check out one of the videos on the screen if you want to learn more about Alpaca. Otherwise, see you again soon. Have a great day.